Charlotte, I want to say happy birthday, my little guy. He's eight years old today. Nate is eight, so happy birthday, little dude. As uh, I'll see you here in a little bit. Let's talk about a big news story, certainly. Adrian Peterson, uh, it's a case that's dominated the headlines, opens the debate on the difference between discipline and abuse. So let's discuss the issue. Dr. Lolita McDavid, she is the medical director of child advocacy at University Hospitals. That's in Cleveland, Ohio. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. So let's talk about the Peterson case, certainly bringing, uh, you know, an awareness here to uh, what is that line between discipline and abuse? What are your thoughts when you saw the pictures of what happened to this little boy? Well, if I did that to you, you would want the police called. I mean, if I took your clothes off and beat you and left those kind of marks, and then I text your mother and tell her that I accidentally, quote, hit you in the nuts, I think you'd want the police called. Yeah, so, so for, for Peterson, initially, he said this is how he was disciplined as a child. And I, uh, in my case, you know, uh, I, I got a belt from my dad. I mean, that's just kind of how you're raised. It was never a switch. Uh, but, but do you understand how some folks, uh, you know, Adrian himself saying that this is how I was raised, and this is, you know, how I turned in to be the guy that I was and kind of kept me on the right track. Uh, I'm sure you, do you hear that from parents? I'm not sure that I think Adrian turned out to be such a great guy. Uh, it's now come up that one of his other children's mothers had f had made uh, allegations that he had abused that child, who at that time was four years old. So I'm not sure that I think he's such a great guy. I think people are self-defended. We we say what we need to say because we think that that is is the thing to do. Uh, when people tell me I turned out all right, I'm always like, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you think you turned out all right, but I may not think you turned out all right. Any of those discussions there at the hospital as far as, uh, you know, where the line is, and just because you did it in the past doesn't mean we have to do it in the future. Well, we don't report everybody who spanks their child. I mean, if I see a child and I see old injuries and I explain to the mother that you can't do that and let's talk about some appropriate ways of parenting. We don't we don't we don't report everybody, but I am a mandated reporter. If I suspect abuse or neglect, by law I have to report it as do principals and school teachers and social workers. So there are a lot of people who are mandated reporters. And quite honestly, the majority of kids who are reported are not reported by people like me. They're usually by family members who are concerned that something is going on with this child. So spanking, you say, you know, don't report, uh, you know, parents who spank. Uh, I, I kind of have issues with that myself. You know, do I spank my child? Do I not? Uh, where do you fall on that? Uh, as again, times have changed. Uh, you know, what used to be accepted isn't uh, necessarily the case today. Well, you want a child to have self-control. And if, if the only way you can control them is by hitting them, then they don't have self-control. You want a child who shows up for the first day of school and can sit in their seat and do what they're told because it feels good to be in control of themselves, not because they're afraid somebody's going to hit them. Well, you're right. We've come a long way. Children used to be chattel. Actually, there was no childhood. You know, children, as soon as they could work in a field or a factory, that's what they did. So we've come a long way in child development. Spanking a child with an open hand with clothes on is one thing. Having a child take their clothes off and taking a, an object and beating them and leaving marks and bruises and lacerations, that is not discipline. That's abuse. What would you do if you're the NFL? Uh, as you know, he's not going to play. The Vikings have uh, put him on kind of the barred from team activities and just away from the team. Is that the move you'd take? Well, I'm not the NFL. You're right. And I think part of the problem is elevated uh, athletes into a position that they really shouldn't be. I mean, if I had my way, I'd pay school teachers what we pay athletes. What the NFL is going to do it has to come from them. They have to find a way to, uh, to manage their own people. Remember, he's just a commodity to them. I mean, in three to five years, he will be of no use. He will, his body will be worn out, and they'll have somebody else to replace him. So he's not a, uh, a person that they are investing 20 and 30 years in. They're investing at most three to five years. Dr. McDavid, great insight here. Medical Director, Child Advocacy, and it is in Cleveland, University Hospitals there. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday. As we continue on the news, Good Day Carolinas on the way. Terrorist group ISIS actually affecting a local business. The 